So back then the game was a lot simpler, but it, it's never been simple. It's always been a, a game with a steep learning curve, which I'm sure you can all appreciate. So um, it, it was a lot simpler, but it was also different and it was still it was broken at that time, even though it didn't have many of the mechanics it has now. Uh, for instance, you could fit a Scorpion with uh, eight micro warp drives and go faster than warp speed. Obviously, it has no practical use because you never know when to stop. So you'll you'll miss the gate by miles um, or miles, light years. Um, but anyway, you had all these these funky things. The kind of, you only had frigates, cruisers, and battleships. Those were the only ships you had. All Tech One. Um, so a much simpler game, uh, different mechanics. Jita wasn't the the place it's now. Uh, back then, you had Yulai, um, which was the main hub, but they rerouted uh, the jump gates. So. Uh, physically, it was a different game. It wasn't as busy as it is now. It was also quite new. Uh, I think I started when the game was about three months old. And then I played for a bit before I started the uni. Uh, but back then, uh, if you had five million skill points, you, you were a veteran. I mean, you, you, you've been there. You, you knew everything. Um, well, that's what people thought. But anyway, uh, I was quite new. It was my first uh, MMO I played. So um, I was quite new to the whole social thing so one of the places I spent most of my time was in the help chat first asking questions and later on obviously the same questions get asked a lot so I could answer some questions as well um, and and that's where it all started for me because I, I enjoyed helping out uh, helping out I, I'm a teacher in real life as well I, I'm a university lecturer and then I also used to be a coach so it's kind of my personality I guess uh, but I, I enjoy helping people and I, and I felt it, it could be so much better than just a chat window. We could do so much more. So that's kind of where the idea started of, of creating a corporation uh, specifically aimed at newer players because I also felt that new players were always looked down upon. It's like you can only join our corporation with X million skill points. Um, and, and I felt bad about that because... I hope you guys all realize, uh, even when you're new, that EVE is not about skill points at all. Sure, skill points allow you to do a certain thing or fly a certain ship, but the person behind the computer is so much more important. And and the person behind the computer is going to uh, make you a success or not. So to me, it, it was about valuing that person behind the computer and not caring so much about skill points or does he know yet about which asteroids to mine or how certain things work? That That's that's all gravy, but it's, it's not what it's about. So I, I wanted to create a place where everyone felt appreciated, even if they were new, and where we could learn the game together. Because at no point ever playing EVE, I considered myself actually pretty good at EVE or even average. I've always considered myself a student. Did that answer your question somewhat? <laughs> I think it is. I think um, what you've said were your motivations in um, starting up i think they really shine through um in the uni today i think it's it's a it's a space that doesn't care about skill points that is about um about just welcoming everyone and just um helping them play this this awful game that we all really like playing <laughs> yeah it is an awful game isn't it Is, but um it's one that we we all um we all keep coming back to <laughs> yeah so so anyway um i i founded eve university and it was it was just me so when i started the corp it had one member so you go in corp chat and it says one um so 
that's kind of interesting because then it's like okay you're sitting there it's like okay now where do i go from here so so that was an interesting time um and and back in the day uh you didn't have all i mean social media this is 2004 social media wasn't a thing so i couldn't say okay let's create a facebook page and uh build it and they'll come um you'd actually have to to reach out to people i know i knew a few people in the game but they've been in the game for a couple of months so they considered themselves a veteran and and this was uh way beneath their uh, level and they all said i was nuts for doing this um and then there was the recruitment channel where pretty much recruiting officers for most corporations uh, pressed control v every five seconds uh, with their recruitment uh, bit um, so that was quite useless so um, basically I just flew around high sec space uh, chatting to people in local and see if they wanted to join um, stupid as it sound and I mean in the in a few days I ha we had the first members It's kind of difficult to imagine you are just flying around in high sec. Uh, hey, you want to join my corp? And when when you when you got started, so I, you had this idea. Hey, we do have to do something to make Eve a little bit more accessible, and you know, give a space for younger players or or new players to to have a space where they can learn without being judged. Maybe. Um, what was your vision for Eve University? Like, did you already have in your mind? Hey, I would like to have different programs, and I want to have campuses. Like, what what was your initial idea behind it? It, it was pretty vague. It, it was more about the atmosphere than the actual thing. I, I did have visions of, of uh, running classes, w which we have now and, and which we had in my time, but that, that took a while to develop. And I was also very naive about sharing stuff. It's uh, almost a communist idea. Obviously, that ended when we had the first corp theft. Um, but the biggest thing was the atmosphere. Uh, then second, I, I did think about classes, etc. But then again, I never considered myself an expert at anything in EVE. So I wouldn't necessarily be the one teaching. So I'd have to get people in to teach, which is a challenge when no one knows about your corporation and what you're trying to do. I mean, after a while, uh, we, we got more known in the community and it became easier to attract uh, guest speakers or, or guest members of people who joined with an uh, uh, with an alt, so so they could play with us and fly with us. Um, so so that was uh, after a while that that kind of got started. But at first, it was more about the atmosphere than actually doing stuff. And yes, we did go out together uh, we, for a while. We had a let's mine each other a battleship program because, like I said, you only had frigates, cruisers, and battleships. And the best mining vessels were the ones with the most high points. So, for instance, uh, a thorax with five points was considered a very good mining vessel. Um, and then a battleship would be even better. Uh, a battleship with eight hard points um, and that could fit, fit eight mining turrets. That would be a great miner. Obviously, it's different now today. But so we get into a program where we'd all mine each other a battleship for instance um mind you talking about this is this is only i think it's about one or two years in the university because at first when we started no one had a battleship there was there were only a couple of ones in in game they were rarer than a, than a titan is now It's uh, when, when veteran players uh, talk about the good old times, that's always one of the things they, they <laughs> tend to mention, how the game was so different and uh, yeah, mining was done with battleships. Yeah. So, so you, you stuck around from 2004 until you gave the, the rain away in 2010, so six years, around six years. H how did EF University develop in that time? Well, it, it just grew and grew and grew and and I'm sure Laura, are we, I actually just met Laura online for the first time, uh, like 30 minutes ago. Uh, but we talked about a, a bit about delegation. And that's been the big thing for me as well, both uh, the big lesson for me, uh, but also the big thing for EVE University, because you have all these 
people who are really enthusiastic because they're playing a game after all, so it's their hobby. Um, and, and they have their visions for the uni as well. And they have their, their energy and their abilities uh, and, and their time that they can uh, provide to the uni. So you get all these ideas, like for instance, the wiki, that, that's an amazing uh, resource. But also people who are very good at uh, Fleet Commander. I just saw Saber A walking in. Congratulations with your birthday, by the way. It's a bit, bit, bit a week late, I think. Anyway, um, so you have all these people coming in and then you have to learn as a CEO to to let go and say, okay, um, here, oh, you have this great idea. Sure, make it work. I, I, I support you. I give you the resources. I... Uh, I, I try to work the, the, our internal community so everyone's ready and, and supportive of your uh, your plan. But uh, in the end, you need all these, these people to make it work. Otherwise, it's not going to happen. If it's just you as a CEO, you just you can't even get 10% done of all the work that's being done in an organization that, that grew as big as Eve University. Um, not sure if uh, Laura wants to talk a bit about that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and in fact, one thing we were talking about just um, just beforehand was also how um, being CEO and being sort of um, responsible for an organisation like this sort of changes you in the real world. And the the things that you learn that you can take away from things, um, just basically the real world skills that you pick up from what is essentially a game. Like, just for me personally, I've um, I've learned so much from being involved in eBuni. Um, I'm a lot more confident and able to deal with the various things that people throw at you <laughs> um, in the real world because a lot of those situations, actually, I've kind of dealt with them in Eve in a way. I've dealt with um, people being unhappy with the decision that I've made, sometimes justifiably. Um, I've dealt with people... Um, you know, managing people's expectations and all of those kind of things that you um, you come you come across in the real world. But in Eve, it's like the real world on steroids kind of thing. It's like um, you come across those things so much more often. So it's um, it's actually really useful to um, pick things up, and it definitely does teach you things um, in real life. Yeah, I, I can only second that. And, and Eve is the real world on steroids because people take it to an extreme. I mean, in the real world, I'm not sure that many people are pirates, for instance. But in, in Eve, you can do that. It's a sandbox. And um, outside of Concord, there's no real law. So people can try stuff and, and things are just more extreme. And also people are very passionate about it. So... Um, Sorry if you hear any waving noise. I like to talk with my hands, and I noticed my hand was waving in front of the microphone. Um, anyway, so it it is extreme, and, and lots of people come up to you and 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 throw things in your face. Um, I'm not going to mention Saber A again. I just did. Um, but anyway, um, it is very intense, but also it, it gave me a lot of confidence. It's like, hey, I I can manage 500 people. Um, and also what I said about delegating, uh, I mean, delegate, there's kind of an art to it. You have to give people not just a task. It's like, Hey, can you water the flowers? That's not a task. That's a chore. But if you say, Hey, you're responsible now for the interior decorating. Hey, that's, that's something. Here's the budget. Let's make it happen. And, and I've actually applied these stuff, uh, these things, um, in my work in real life and, it actually worked as well because if it works in Eve, a social thing like that, it's going to work in real life as well. Because uh, in Eve, everyone's is, is a volunteer, is do is a hobby. So if you manage people in real life, like you can manage people in Eve, it's it's going to work. They're going to be really happy, and then they get paid as well in real life. Um, so it it is very educational to be the CEO or to be a, in a management position. In, in an organization in EVE. So if you're inclined that way, or, or perhaps you're insecure, can can I do this? Uh, yeah, perhaps you can. Try it. Go for it. So 
So I'm trying to think to sort of, you know, move towards a more recent times. So, so Morning Mania, you played for quite a while. Laura, you, you, I don't think you started when, when Eve came out. You kind of came in a little bit later. How do you think Eve evolved? Is, you know, is it more complex these days or is it easier to play? I'm always wondering. I think many, many people that are part of Eve University, they are also quite new to the game. So they don't know so much how Eve looked like in the past and, and what it would have changed. And I'm very curious on how people that play for many years, I myself only for one year so far, like how did they kind of perceive how, how Eve is developing over time? Are you going to take that, Laura? <laughs> yeah, I was hoping Laura can tell us a little bit about it. <laughs> yeah, I can do. Um, I've, well, I've been playing since um, only since 2012, but I can say in that time, Eve has changed an awful lot. Um, there's, I mean, there's constantly mechanics and stuff to get your head around, and the amount, I think that kind of um, is shown by the amount of people that reapply to Eve University having taken a break, and we say, what do you want to learn? And they say, I don't know anything anymore. I don't know about um, abyssal space. I don't know about uh, maybe wormholes. I, there's just there's constant developments which um, keep things exciting, but also mean that there's um, there's always something for people to learn, um, even if they've um, considered themselves really good at the game before and they've taken a break and have decided to come back. Um, and there's so many new things for them to pick up on nowadays. Yeah, and to, to pick up on your question uh, about difficult or easy, um, back in the day, learning the game was easier because there was just a lot less content. You didn't have the tech tool, you didn't have the faction stuff, uh, you didn't have wormholes, etc., etc. Um, but it was also a lot more challenging, for instance, to make ISK. It, it could take months before you could afford your first cruiser. It's, it's like five million. It, that that would take forever. Um, while these days, I, I feel that it's a lot easier to do that, uh, which makes it also a lot less painful when you lose your first cruiser or your first frigate or, or whatever. Um, so in some ways, it's it's a lot more difficult. And and I think if you want to master all of Eve, that's that's very difficult because there is so much to it. PvP, PvE. Uh, in the industrial side if you want to master all of that it's, it's difficult um, it was easier at the time but uh, it's also a bit easier now to, just to make ISK and also to, to get skill points is a bit faster these days than it used to be because you didn't have implants for instance or uh, different clones the game kind of holds your hand a bit more as well at the beginning nowadays like the the new player experience I know is something that CCP have been working on a lot and it's um, it tries to kind of drop you in a bit gently now and give you a bit like um, if you run the tutorial nowadays like it um, it has you going around and you know like shooting rats and all of that kind of stuff like it tries to kind of give you a basic understanding of various things like training skills and fitting your ship and things like that which um, is quite a marked difference from well, I mean certainly when I joined it wasn't that sort of handholdy it was kind of like okay you're in space here's a ship go yeah it, it sounds like it's improved a lot um, I, I had another point but I forgot so <laughs> on to the next question I'm, I'm sort of wondering how, like, for, for me, I, I find this very interesting to think how Eve sort of evolved and then in, in retrospective also Eve University, right? Like if I if I look how Eve University does things now and then Laura said it, you know, even if you're not in management, I think once you start looking into how professionalized sort of a, a volunteer-led organization in a video game can be, it's quite impressive how, you know, how many layers of management and how many people involve themselves daily. So I'm sort of wondering, you know, how, how did Eve University evolved throughout the time and I don't know the, the question sort of goes to both of you I think you played at different moments um, but at least you can maybe give us a bit of an idea on, on, on how your perceived you know progression of EVE University happened uh, throughout the last 16 or so years right if I'll start and Laura can then uh, take over from uh, where I left off does that work yeah sure 
Well, so at the start, it was just me and the channel. That's management level one, right? Actually, managing yourself can be quite tricky. Uh, so, but that that's another another class altogether. But at least, um, so you have people coming in, people joining. And so when you reach about 30, 40 people, it starts to get slightly complicated because uh, then you'll notice that you spread across time zones. Not everyone's on at the same time, which means that you need some kind of vehicle for your communication. Um, because at first we just had corp chat. That, that was basically it. And then soon we opened to EVE University chat channel. So externals could also talk and maybe uh, inquire about a corporation. Uh, but that was about it. Um, and then also, because I considered myself a newbie. Well, I was a newbie. Uh, so I, I considered the others as, as equals. So they came up with great ideas. Perhaps we can teach them PVP, get some fleets together and go into low sec. Or perhaps we, for instance, this mine, let's mine each other a battleship program. That was not my thing. That was someone else came up with that and started running with them. So if then someone came up with that, it's like, okay, you're the, man, you're the mining manager from now on. Because I, I love to give out titles um, and it makes people feel important and, and willing to do the work. So that's how you kind of slowly um get this management structure but it's always in my time at least been a, a bottom up thing someone someone comes up with uh, a certain need okay we need this and then i ask okay what do you need for me to make that happen um because at the time for an eve player i had quite a bit of isk going around uh i was trading and, and later on i got some uh, blue uh, tech 2 blueprint originals i was making money off so for an EVE player in high sec, I was doing quite well. Um, so I, I could fund some I internal stuff. Uh, but it was usually from a request of one of the my fellow EVE University members. Uh, it's like, can we do this? Or, or can we provide this? Can you provide that? I usually bounce that back. Okay, you're now the manager of this or that. And and then as the corporation grows, you, you also need like kind of an HR or recruitment uh, program. So that all comes into it as well as the organization grow. But it's been, in my time, been quite organic and more of a bottom-up thing for coming up from the members than down from me or from the other management. I think, um, I think that's something that we still do. Um, the, the sort of the bottom-up idea of um things coming from the members and then the corporation's job i guess is to try and facilitate that and assist them in doing whatever content they want to do so if someone wants to take out a fleet for example then sure go and take our fleet like we will help you to um prepare and things like that but you want to do it then sure if you have an, an idea for something you want to do like okay what can we do help you do that it's it's more about the mem it, like content all of the content is really driven by the members it's not that we have um a group of management who their job is to do everything their job is to arrange all the classes arrange all the fleets and everything like that because i don't think that is the kind of environment that eve university has it's very much a facilitating people to learn through doing stuff themselves and just supporting them in doing that yeah, yeah. My my approach is always I I'm ordered I'm honoured that you joined my corporation, so I'm not going to tell you what to do. Uh, you tell me what you want to do, and I'll try to facilitate that. Uh, that's always been my approach. I I'm still amazed that people joined, and and still join. I'm I'm so amazed that it's still around. Um, <laughs> so, I mean, and and kudos to to Laura and everyone else who is and has been in management uh, or otherwise active or just creating a great atmosphere. Um, because I, I am still amazed that, I mean, it's 2021 now. I found it in 2004. That's, I mean, that's mind blowing. I think it's amazing. And the follow up question would be if you are owning any shares. No, but jokes aside, um, uh, there is a question from the chat. Tomcat is asking whether uh, 
uh, yeah, for both of you, the question goes for both of you, uh, if there's people talking about stuff uh, that you remember from your time as CEO and uh, did they leave an impact on you, you know, to you personally or maybe the uni? Um, there is a couple and, and one I always like uh, to mention and I, I will mention him again because he's right here, uh, Saber A. He, I, I'm not sure I can say that, but he, he's a bit older now, obviously, it's, it's been a while. Um, so he's grown up to in the, uh, into a sensible uh, person, but back then he was kind of rash and new, young and he was one of the people that gave me a lot of trouble. Um, but I just liked him so much as a person that um, he could get away with murder, uh, pretty much. And, and he did, because he killed people he shouldn't. Um, and and there are more, and especially in the directorships. Uh, I, I remember, for instance, a guy called Aurelian. Um, well, that was his character name. I, I still have him on Facebook, and that's why, why I remember some people more than others, because I actually know their real-life name and, and kind of know what they're up to still. Um, but he was always so British, like he'd be under fire uh, as a as a tackler and just say in his, in his beautiful British accent can someone come please come over and help me please uh, and it'd be so lovely and I just imagine s s him sipping tea while he was doing that um, and, and he was also very sensible and, and we had Silent Brick who's all, always on the, the military side of things uh, kind of our Secretary of Defense in, in those days um, uh, Miraki, who was, I think he was actually the first member who joined, and he he just lurked in the corp chat for years, and then finally he stepped up and stepped up big. He set up the web, our first website and forums. Um, so yeah, and there's so many names that that spring to my mind as D Carson, uh, also the guys from the Big Blue. I spent so many hours in hours in meetings with them um, trying to pull this dead horse along um, the, the big blue by the way was the the previous alliance we were in um, but yes yeah, so, so many names and uh, mostly awesome people I, I met along the years and who definitely left their impact on me as, as a person as well and on the uni I just say that I um, object to the categorization of Saber as a sensible, mature person. <laughs> it, it's all relative. <laughs> Poor Saber, and he can't even say anything. <laughs> I know, I'm loving it. Um, for me, um, I would say, in relation to that question, I, um, yeah, absolutely, there's been people that have, um, that I've met through Eve and Eve University specifically that are just going to be friends for a long time. Um, I mean, uh, like I met my husband in Eve University, that was a big thing. <laughs> um, and uh, one of my very good friends, um, now CEO, Gino, came to our wedding. Um, and I've met loads of people um, in person through Eve meetups and fan fests and things like that. Um, and just like the people even that I haven't met in person yet, um, either through COVID or whatever. Um, but that I spend time hanging out with and chatting with on pretty much a daily basis like yeah they've all really affected me and like, changed you know changed my life really yes so the game is virtual but the friendship is real I do. Um, I think I have a dread in Corsiki, which uh, was where uh, HQ used to be, um, our third HQ actually. And I'm not sure where my roll call and my carrier are. I'm not. No, they're not in high sec. Uh, but uh, my dread is. You should be logging in and uh, donating it to Laura, maybe. <laughs> or to the person that asked the question. Um, 
we have a few more questions. There's one more. I'll, I'll just gonna read. It. I'm just gonna read it out because it's a little bit longer. Um, the question I think goes to you, Morning Maniac. But uh, Laura, I would love to hear your take on this as well, since you've just recently stepped down as CEO and. Uh, you also have a lot of experience in that sense. The question is, what are your thoughts about new pilots with fresh ideas, tactics and ship fittings that are not so much in line with corporation norms and doctrines? What wisdom can you give to people who work or went to work towards positive change in a company or a corporation um, but are not making progress? Uh, the best advice in EVE is don't fly what you can't afford to lose. So if you want to try something new, a different fitting, uh, sure, you can go on the test server, um, but yeah, if, if you want to be innovative, um, I mean, you have my blessing. Uh, I know these days there's like doctrines and um, it's certainly the case if you're the fleet commander and you uh, describe a certain doctrine, then you expect your fleet to be fitted in a certain way and then if you're not fitted in that specific way you're not really helping your fleet along if if they expect you to to do some remote repairing and you haven't fitted those uh you're kind of letting your site down so you that's not the place to be uh innovative on your own but uh i think eve university is a good place to uh, start this discussion about your new ideas and, and chances are that someone has tried it and, and filled with it. And maybe you want to give a new spin to it, um, but nothing is stopping you from from doing what you want to do. I mean, it's a sandbox. You can do anything. And the worst thing that can happen is that you lose your ship and get potted. Uh, and you just have to make sure that you can uh, live with that. Yeah, that's all really true. And I would just add that, um, I mean, I'm biased as hell, but I personally think the EV University has changed a lot in the recent in the recent past. Um, I know that previously um, there were times when um, management, I guess, were not particularly good at taking useful suggestions and feedback. Um, I think that's changed and I think that the corporation that we have today is one where you can make suggestions and um, come up with fresh ideas and um, have them listened to um, and that's not to say always agreed on because not every idea is a good idea and sometimes there's things that you haven't considered or whatever um, or that you just don't see because of your perspective that you have. But I think that we have a corporation now where people um, will be listened to and people who are trying to work to cause positive change will, you know, will be able to do so. So if it's something that perhaps you might have been um, a little wary of coming up with fresh ideas and stuff before, like I would say, um, like, try again. <laughs> um, we are listening to you, I promise. So, so uh, there's the second question from Tomcat. Laura, how did you get roped into the CEO role? And both, how did you convince your successors to take over? <laughs> Very good question. <laughs> how, what did you bribe them with? <laughs> well, the idea of we're just like roping people into things. <laughs> um, for me personally, um, I got roped into the CEO role. Um, I was a director under the previous CEO, Asmodeus Falar. Um, I was um, aware because um, Asmo had been quite open with that he was, um, you know, having some uh, difficulties in real life and needed to take some time away from um, all of the CEO responsibilities and sort of delegate some stuff to someone else. Um, and he asked for any of the directors that were able to take some of the load off of him. So I kind of said, yeah, I'll do it. And I sort of, I became director of operations in basically like a support role to the CEO um, and just sort of took a lot of that, a lot of the smaller things away so that he could focus on the bigger things and, um, you know, spend his, um, by that point, fairly limited time in game on the stuff that really, really mattered, that really needed CEO input. And then um, when he decided to 
um, actually step down as CEO, I guess I was the kind of natural successor because I had been doing that job for um, about a year or so. Um, and as for how I convinced Gilo to take over, um, I mean, we had a few um, a few heart to hearts in Mumble. Um, we um, he was a director at that point, and um, we have always got on very well. And um, he was again, he was kind of informally taking on some of those things. So he was to me the, the natural successor. So I had a, a fair few hearts to heart heart to hearts with him, um, and um, yeah, he was able to decide that it was. Um, the right decision for him and then we sort of began the process of um transferring over doing exactly the same thing by making him a director of operations first of all and then um learning the sort of stuff that i did day to day um until he felt and i felt that he was in a position to take it on properly yeah for me it's similar obviously i i didn't take over from someone but uh cal doom to took over from me uh, because of real life developments. I had a lot less time to um, devote to Eve University, um, not as much time as it needed. Um, so I ha had several people acting as a director and, and Cal Doom was, had like the, the, the broadest portfolio and the broadest interest in all aspects of the game so he seemed like the most natural successor and he also started in a, in a role as a director of operations doing the day-to-day -day stuff and I just more and more stepped into the background uh, more like the high priest than the CEO I, I, I just kind of steered the ship um, if, if it needed steering at that point um, or if I felt it needed steering, if, if other people approached me. So after a year or so of that, I decided to, um, to to step down finally as a CEO. So it's kind of a similar process as what Laura describes. Um, I also see a question in Mumble from Jack the Ripper. Uh, your most memorable moment in the uni, um, Laura. <laughs> oh, um... That's kind of a difficult one. <laughs> um, I mean, becoming CEO, that was pretty memorable. <laughs> um, I'm not sure if that counts. Um, but yeah, that's a, certainly something that I'll remember. Um, but I mean, there's been so many um, really memorable moments that, you know, like funny things that just still sort of make me laugh. And um, yeah, just so many things really. Um, but the biggest one would be being becoming CEO. Yeah, I, I too find this a difficult question. It was a question to both of us, uh, but I, I too find it difficult to pin down. I, I certainly have some specific memories about certain battles, um, but uh, the overall feeling I have left from the uni is just the, 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 the community sense, the, the warm, fuzzy feeling of the community. Every time you log in, say hi in chat, and immediately getting always getting this friendly response um from all the members it, it's like taking a, a hot shower um but specific moments we had uh, the the battle uh, when we were part of the big blue uh, that was uh, certainly interesting um also our, our time in in drone space when we uh, when we tried to claim some space uh, for the the good of the uni uh, that didn't work out either um but yeah so many different uh moments but mostly uh just just a feeling of of the community i'm, I'm looking at chat and there's another question where someone really wants to talk about saber a <laughs> <laughs> the question is, who are the most famous and infamous Unistas of your generation? <laughs> if there's someone else than Saber, maybe. <laughs> uh, there is not. Laura? Um, yeah, we've had a lot of people come through the uni um, in, my, I guess, my generation of being in the uni. Um, we've got one who's um, going to be giving a talk in the near future, which is Rosorian, who is now CCP Aperture. 
and he does these amazing um like photographs like screenshots of um of eve which just demonstrate really how beautiful eve is and that's um that's lovely um also um i know that ccp fozzy was in eve uni before my time but um another ccp i'm sure we have far more um members of ctp as well who just haven't um told us <laughs> yeah yeah we had <laughs> but yeah we've got um a lot of a lot of people who have been through our doors and are now out doing amazing things in eve yeah we, we've also had lots of alts of people um who sometimes i i knew they were old some sometimes i didn't that in times of need sometimes they like well-known fleet commanders would join us to to help us out in a, in a certain uh corporate warfare uh issue um so yeah we've probably had more than i know about uh i i see some more uh questions in uh, mumble chat so I'll, I'll just take them if you don't ah, mind. yeah absolutely i'm trying to keep a tab at all the different parts of question it's perfect that you're checking mumble <laughs> yeah if if you've been CEO, you can easily handle 20 chat channels at the same time. Anyway, a uh, question. How has EVE University's uh, relationship with other corps evolved over the years? Um, well, I always, in my time, try to uh, emphasize our neutrality because uh, I envisioned that people would join EVE University, learn about the game, and then most people would move on. Uh, and by not being allied to any specific corp, uh, I would hope that they have the option to join anyone they'd like. Uh, because in Eve, there's, there's fences, right? So if you're on one side of the fence, you're going to stay on that side of the fence. Otherwise, people don't trust you. At least that's how it used to be. I'm not sure if that's still the case. Um, but it was very difficult to hop over the fence. Um, especially since a, a lot of people didn't have alts at the time uh, because you didn't have the alpha accounts. Um, so anyway, uh, we tried to stay neutral. We, we had issues with people declaring war on us, obviously, because they thought they were easy targets. Um, we, we had the times when we tried to claim space, and obviously when you try to do that, you make some enemies as well. Uh, but... For the most, we've always tried to be uh, neutral and we've had uh, support from other corporations. I've already mentioned the Big Blue a few times. Those corporations really try to support us and we try to support them. Uh, didn't work out, but we've had friends over the years uh, trying to support us and we've had enemies uh, trying to kill us, uh, pretty much like everyone else in EVE, I guess. Yes, for nowadays that's something that we still um we still maintain the idea of um new, neutral but not pacifist basically so um yeah if you if you bite us we're gonna bite back but um we don't take sides in um politics and um all of that kind of stuff um yeah so uh but we we don't we're not like groups like um Signal, signal cartel for instance who have a policy of non-aggression like um they will not pvp we don't have that um like we will we will fight we will fight hard <laughs> as i'm sure a lot of you guys who've been on the um the recent structure back structure bashes would have seen um but we neutrality nowadays for eve uni really means that we don't take sides in um political things and stuff like that yeah, I, I, at the start, I had issues convincing people of, of that because uh, you you had a lot of people joining EVE University who didn't want to PvP. And I always felt that PvP is a part of it. Um, yes, I don't like it when someone blows up my industrial full of goodies in high sec, but that is part of the game. And that's what we're trying to teach you about, how you can prevent that and also that that can just happen. Um, so... I've never ever been against PvP. It 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 hasn't really been my thing, but it's uh, it's definitely part of the game. And if if you don't like that, then you need to play a, a single player game. 
which is fine, but that's not what EVE Online is. So it is, uh, it is a PvP game. So it, it's part of it. And that's what we've been trying to teach in the uni. So how not to get ganked in high sec. I think, um, I mean, I've only seen, obviously, the latter part of um, EVE Uni, but I think that EVE Uni has kind of gone in cycles in terms of its view on things like PvP. Because um, I know when I first joined um, the personnel department, which are the people that process applications, people applying to the uni and do interviews, one of the criteria for rejecting someone was if they just want to learn PvP, because the view was if they want to learn PvP, go and learn PvP somewhere else in a corp that just does PvP. And that is, I think that's quite a marked difference today. Um, the amount of fleets and stuff that we have going out and the the FC team, and we're really trying to um, teach people PvP and prepare them for it, um, if that's what they want to do. Like obviously there's people that don't want to PvP and that's completely fine, but we now do embrace that as a subject area that people want to learn and yeah, let's let's do it. Yeah, I, I, and I, I totally agree with that. Um, and, and that's what I envisioned when we started. And also when I resigned as a CEO, I, I told Caldoom and everyone else in management, hey, if you turn EVE Uni in a, in a pirate corporation or, or whatever you want to do with it, it's fine. I don't want to rule beyond my grave. I don't want to come back uh, in EVE Online and, and start shouting at you uh, that, that you did it all wrong and you killed my baby. Hey, I, I decided to step down, so it, it's it's your thing now. Uh, but it, this is the vision I had I, uh, to teach all aspects of the game. And, and PvP is, is one of the main aspects of the game. So it's not the only thing... I felt we should be teaching, but it's definitely one of the main things we should be teaching. Um, and also, I always felt because it, it's it's a sandbox game, you can do anything. Why just tie yourself down to one thing? Why not try all these different things? And then perhaps you decide, okay, I've tried PvP and I don't like it. That's fine too, but at least you've tried it. Because sometimes you, you do need to take that step to find out that you actually really enjoy it. So... Um, yeah, I'm totally on board with where the university went in, in the recent years uh, under Laura's command. So um, thank you, Laura. Well done. <laughs> Absolutely. And, Absolutely, um, Laura. I have kind of like a kind of like a follow up question on something you said um, in terms of like the direction that Eve Uni has taken. Are there any sort of surprises for you like nowadays that you kind of weren't expecting um, from when you originally founded the corp? No, um, not not surprises. It's, it, I mean, it's 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 more. It's not a revolution. It's it's more an evolution. Like the different campuses, at certain times we we felt we should all be in the same place in space, um, because as the uh, the university has grown but it also contracted at times so when your group of players gets smaller it it's nice to be in a certain place because you can say okay we'll start a campus here in the middle of nowhere and that might be great but if if there's only one person in that campus it's not really a thing um so you need a certain uh body of students to to make that happen to make these uh campuses work and i i'm so glad to see that uh that that's obviously the case because you have these campuses and they do work. So I don't know the current member count, but I do know that it's enough to support all these initiatives. And I, I, I only think that's a good thing. And um, you've also mentioned before that uh, EVE University policy has gone back and forth a bit over the years, uh, for instance, with PVP and their attitude towards PVP. Um, I noticed that too, obviously, just from the sidelines, but I never felt that it was my position anymore to to say anything about that. Also, because I'm no longer in the game, so the game mechanics change. Uh, I know for a while the, 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 corporate, the corporate warfare, the war declaration system changed. I know Kaldoom found a way to, to farm it and exploit it, perhaps even. Um, so all that, I, I didn't know the... the, the me mechanics of it so i never felt that it was my 
uh, my place to say anything about it, but I, I definitely am happy to see where it is now. There was a question about the campuses. Uh, when, when were they established? Could, do you remember in, in which year, around which year that was? No. Um, in my time, most of the time, we had like a central HQ. Well, or decentral HQ, I should say, because we tried to find a, a place that was kind of off the beaten path, but close enough to the beaten path, if you know what I mean. Um, and, and some people, uh, some members wanted to hang out there, but we also have had members, and I'm sure there still are people who kind of do their own thing and just uh, join the chat and the, the voice chat. Um, so we never had official campuses in my time, apart from the main HQ, but we, we did have groups of members splitting up in a in certain location, if that makes sense, because if if your corporation goes beyond a couple of hundred members, uh, you're always going to have groups within the group, people who find each other because they're always on, on the, uh, at the same time, for instance, because of the time zones. Um, and they find each other in space as well. Um, and, and that's fine. We try to support that as well. And sometimes we open an office there so we can have like a, a corporate hangar. Um, but nothing as official, as, as well organized as, as we do now. There is a wiki page, which I'll link in chat, which has um, a very um, abbreviated history of things like when various campuses were established and things like that. Um, it is very brief and it seems to stop in 2017, but um, it's got some things like, you know, uh, this is when the Lose campus is established, this is when the Wormhole campus is established and stuff like that. So, so who was CEO in 2017? Who dropped the ball? <laughs> it's probably me. Yeah, I'm just kidding. Yeah. I think the last thing was me taking over as CEO and then just nothing. Nothing's happened in any of uni since then. <laughs> Yeah, that's where history ends. Anyway, I see another question um, in uh, Mumble Chat. Um, for me, if you had to start EVE Uni again, what would you do differently? Um, I'm, I'm not sure I would do anything differently. It kind of worked out, perhaps not as a, I envisioned, but I, I enjoyed the entire ride from start to finish. Uh, I say that now, long meetings with Big Blue, uh, hours sitting in space waiting for a fleet to gather. Perhaps I didn't enjoy all of it, but I'm not sure that would be different now and if I could change that. But no, I, I think I enjoyed the organic way how it happened. Because like I said before, I don't want to be the guy uh, sitting in my ivory tower looking down on everyone, telling them what to do because I have this vision. I, I, I want to do this together and I want to cater to people's needs and not specifically to my need. My need is to make everyone happy. That's, that's my, just my personality. I, I like to facilitate and I like to, to build new stuff. I'm, I'm not the guy who can uh, do admin. I'm not very, I mean, if you look at my desk now, it's a huge mess that's not my strength I, I want to come up with new stuff and want to move forward so i don't think i would do anything differently interesting because uh yes that's i think why you work in academia right like you want to come up with new things <laughs> talking talking of academia we actually have a, a another question from twitch which i think leads very nicely there I, I don't know how long you're still planning in academia professors usually stay for a long time but someone is asking will you ever come back to if uni you know maybe in your in your retirement um i think this is question for me again right yes absolutely um well another the thing i the the private thing the real life thing um i i quit eve university about is a relationship and i'm still in a relationship but now i also have children well actually i have one child and another one on the way and due in about two weeks time um and if you know anything about children they take up a lot of time 
And if you know anything about Eve, it also takes a lot of time. So for the next few years, it's, it's going to be a real challenge because one thing I, I find difficult about MMOs in general is that uh, you play with other people, so you kind of have to re be reliable. If, if you're going to have a, a meetup for, for, for whatever purpose, uh, so if it's going to be at 7 p.m., you have to be able to make it. And both because of my work being very flexible in a sense that I never know when I'm going to have work, um, and the fact that I have very young children, well, one young child and one on the way, is that I, I find it very difficult to make that level of uh, commitment. And I can play EVE as like a single player and just go out mining or do agent missions or whatever, but I found that I, I kind of done that. I'm, I'm not really in love with EVE online as I used to be. Uh, from that perspective, the only thing I would play EVE for is uh, because of the EVE University community and, and doing stuff with the community. But be able to do that, I, I need to be reliable uh, with my time. That That's what I feel. I know that some people can manage it, but um, I'm not a very good multitasker at all. So when I do something, I tend to do it 12 hours a day, and that's that's not going to happen. Yeah, I think that's absolutely understandable. There's uh, a, a good comment from chat, uh, Morning Maniac, which is... Uh, you can get your kids to play Eve, so you know. I think the idea is to make some future capsule years. So in your retirement, you can all play together Eve and enjoy the community again. So we'll give you a few more years, um, but you know, if you decide to come back next year, uh, we'll probably ask you the same question again. <laughs> yeah, I, I have one of these these uh, wives who, who doesn't like screen time for their children. Our two-year-old doesn't know that our television works. She knows what the television does from other people's homes, but she doesn't know that ours actually works. So getting her behind a computer and mining Feldspar for me, it's going to be a stretch. Not with her, but with uh, with the missus. <laughs> <laughs> so, so guys, we're, we're around an hour in now, and I, I still wanted to talk a little bit at least about sort of the future of EVE University as well. And maybe, Laura, since, since you just stepped down as a CEO, you, you've just given sort of the rein to someone else. Um, I'm sure that when you had your talks with Gilo, you also talked about what EVE University should be in your vision in the future. And I'm sure he has, you know, similar visions, but maybe some other ideas. What, where do you think EVE University heads and also maybe bringing it back to EVE itself? EVE is constantly improving its new player experience. Do you think there will be a moment where EVE University as a corporation will not be needed anymore? Or do you do you not see that happen in the, in the next two or three years, maybe? <laughs> um. In terms of the direction for EVE University, that's um, well, that's within Julo's hands now. Um, I think that me and Julo have got a lot of, um, like, we think the same way a certain amount. Um, so I know that he's got a lot of really exciting ideas, um, which, um, yeah, I'm happy to support him on. But, um, yeah, the direction of EVE Uni is now in his hands, and I'm trying very hard to not interfere, <laughs> uh, which um, I'm sure um, was as, as something that you um, that you also went through as well, Morning Maniac, the idea of sort of um, not um, not trying to sort of um, give your views on things like um, it's um, sort of letting letting the next generation kind of um, do their thing and um, not interfering, I guess. Yeah, I, I think that's the only way to step down. You're you're either in it or you're not. A kind of halfway ma uh, CEO manager that doesn't work. You, you you're doing the work. You're there or you're not. Uh, that that's my view at least. Uh, I mean, there's two kind of managers, and that our managers who are really involved, or the managers that are not not involved at all and just delegate full responsibility uh, and just facilitate. But you you don't want to do halfway. Yeah, and I'm definitely the first type. <laughs> I like to be involved. I like to know what's going on, and I like to be in there fixing problems and things like that. So it's, um, I mean, I only stepped down in December, but it's been a bit of a culture shock to step back and say, "Hold on, no, don't, don't interfere. Someone else has got this. It's not your job anymore." <laughs> I'm sort of um, learning that skill. I think I'm doing okay so far, but it's still, um, it's still a struggle, and it probably will be for a while. 
Well, here's here's a question uh, for you, Laura. I, I guess for me as well, but it didn't state in the in the mumble chat. Um, now that the uni has evolved and grown, facilitating multiple levels of real management training, what advice would you give to younger slash middle managers in their roles? Um, I think it's very important if you're new to management to um, understand, first of all, your what your job is. <laughs> that is, um, that's something that sometimes takes managers a little while to pick up like what are the things that you are expected and able to make decisions on and what are the things that um you are not either because you will have staff that do that or because you have a manager above you whose job it is to do that so um understanding exactly what your job is and what decisions you're expected to make um is very important and also I think communication is probably the most important thing. And that again is something that some managers take a little bit of time to pick up on because they might be doing these amazing things behind the scenes, but they're not telling anyone that they're doing it. So um, from an outside perspective, it's like, you know, you're maybe not doing as much as you, um, you actually are, but actually you're working really hard behind the scenes. So yeah, like, tell people keep people informed on what you're doing um keep your staff informed and just yeah keep keep shouting about the awful, awesome stuff that you're doing because um yeah someone needs to do it and it should really be you yeah i want to second that you you are your own pr manager and this is in eve and in real life as well uh do make sure that people know what you're doing so they can see the value in what you're doing um so that means that when the time comes for a raise, you, you, you are confident and, and they'll give it to you. Um, but also, I think when you manage people, uh, I think the key thing is support. Um, so you can't just say to people, do this, do that. You need, ideally, I mean, I in, in real life, I also used to manage volunteers, uh, hundreds of them. If I wanted to do something, I would go go into the social area, just drop my ideas in there, in 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 like an informal conversation, and then in a couple of months' time, they would come back to me, and people say, "Oh, we really want this." Of course, it was my idea, but they all felt it was their idea. That perhaps they they built on it, they they changed it a little, but it's basically the direction I wanted to go. But the main difference is that now I had their full support in making it happen. Um, while if you just push people around, if the only incentive is, is the paycheck, then in the long run, you're not going to have a very motivated force because anyone can do anything if they are properly motivated. Well, within reason, but most people can do almost anything if you manage to motivate them. And, and the key motivator is, is having them do what they want to do. And you just have to make sure that those are the right things that work for you and your organization. And and in that respect, there is no difference between EVE Online or EVE University and real life, actually. Uh, I see another mumble question. Um, where would you like to see Eve University mentioned or promoted in the real world? Drink socials aside, would you like to see Eve University's ideals, goals, pilots, logos featured or cameoed in a newspaper, short films or commercials? I, I do get a giggle out of that when I see like an uh, on Facebook something linked about Eve University that's not by Eve University. Um, so yeah, I, I enjoy it. I doesn't, I don't know if it adds much to the, to the university's mission, but it's, uh, that's great. I mean, if you created something, uh, and, and you see it in the real world, I mean, I, I have an actual trophy. I, I mean, we don't have a camera on now, but I have an actual trophy, uh, which I kind of use as a paperweight, uh, from the E on magazine. I think it's long gone now, but, uh, we were like the, I, I don't even know what it was for, but kind of a community thing of the year or something like that. Uh, 
and that's cool. That um, still pleases me to, to see that. And I have it on my desk, so I get to see it every time I uh, I sit down behind my desk. So that's uh, that's pretty cool. But I'm not sure if uh, if it would add to the uni if uh, if we'd see Eve University appear in Die Hard Six. But perhaps Laura has a different opinion. <laughs> no, I, I think the same on that. I think it's kind of cool when we see stuff out of game. Um, but I don't think it's something we're sort of um, personally. I don't think it's something to actively push at the moment i think we've got um i think we, there's always um there's always 101 things to do in um eve university and i think um there's um probably other things that um take priority over out of game um commercials and stuff yeah mind you if 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 you uh space warfare development ask this question if, if you happen to be steven spielberg uh, in real life, and you want to put Eve University in your uh, movies, yeah, go ahead, um, because that puts you kind of in a unique position to make that happen. Uh, but I don't think top down this should happen. If it happens bottom up, hey, go for it. At least that's my opinion, and I have absolutely nothing to say. Another question on Mumble. Um, I know a lot of big NullSec Corp position themselves as some degree of we're the best newbie training corp. Any thoughts on this and how these might reflect back onto the uni? Um, I wish everyone all the best in the world. Uh, as long as you're not killing people in the real world or something like that, uh, I wish everyone the best. So if someone else starts a, a training corp, and tries to teach new players, yeah, go for it. Um, back in the day, uh, I, I kind of hoped perhaps we could start some athletic competition, do some PvP practice with other training corps, uh, and I think that has, has happened uh, at, at some point with uh, Red versus Blue, for instance. Um, but yeah, I, I I don't mind if they say they are the best, then uh, hey, they, if they are actually are the best, then, uh, then they're doing a great job. Uh, because I think that the uni is pretty awesome itself. I think that one was specifically was pandemic court. <laughs> um, but I think that that is one thing that has changed a lot, certainly in just in my time in playing Eve, is the number of um, corporations now aimed at new players. Um, there's like every every null block has got one. Everyone, um, you know, there's so many options for. Um, new players now in joining corporations but having said that i i well I'm, obviously i'm incredibly biased but i do think there's still a place for Eve university because i think having had um alts in various um new player training corps i do think that we have something different i think that we have a different um atmosphere a different environment um which is very for me personally is very conducive to learning it's sort of um it's a, a friendly sort of non-judgmental kind of yep you can come here you can say if you want to fc a fleet um and you take out the fleet and you completely wipe the fleet and everyone dies um like we're the corp that's like great that's brilliant what did you learn you know <laughs> what did you learn for next time so that you're not going to wipe your fleet next time but we don't care about like um Killboard st statistics or anything like that. We're not coming down on you and saying, "Oh, your fleet was not isk isk efficient enough" or anything like that. We're sort of we're friendly um, and just just a kind of non judgmental place to learn, which I think is something that um, we've always had, and I think that sort of sets us apart from a lot of other corporations. Yeah, and I also think the neutrality helps because if you join one block's training corp, you're kind of on that side of the fence from then on it's going to be difficult to make the switch to another big block. Um, so it, once you've made that decision, uh, you might be there for a while. And perhaps later on, you find out that, that you'd rather be in the other block, but that makes uh, that's going to be difficult. While I hope with EVE University, you still have all your options open. And while you're learning not just about the game mechanics, but also about these different blocks and EVE politics, you're kind of reading up on it. 
then you can make a more informed decision which way you want to go rather than making that decision at the start and perhaps finding that you're not in the place where you want to be. Plus all the things Laura said. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And I think... Um... Sorry, my mind's gone completely blank of what I was going to add. <laughs> oh, I know. Um, I was going to say about um, how I think it's really good, actually, that there is all of this, all of these options for new players now, because it's easy, perhaps, sometimes from the point of view of inside of university to see it as competition, but it's not. It's, um, it's other ways to learn the game. And some people might find that um, the way that we teach things in Eve University isn't to, um, the way that they learn best. So they might go and join another corporation and find, actually, this suits me better, which to me, that's great. That's great that there are other options out there and there are so many people that want to teach people how to play this game because it's it's such a complicated game. And um, yeah, it's. I think it's great that there's so many other options out there and I don't sort of hold it against them. Like, great, you're, you're teaching new players how to play the game and getting them interested in this game that I also love. So brilliant, like, good luck to you. Yeah, and sometimes it's just a matter of, of language. Um, I mean, Eve University, the main language is English, of course, but some people's command of the English language is, is lacking. It's not sufficient to understand something as complicated as Eve. So then having a Russian training corp, if that's your native language, makes perfect sense. That That's where you should go, no question. I see another question from Lucianus. Um, if you could go back in time and do it all over again, what would you do differently? Um, for me, um, I, I think I already answered that, uh, but not much. See, I'm kind of on the other side, like I would do so much differently <laughs> um, if I was um, to have my time as CEO over again. I think um, I'm happy with where things went um, ultimately, but there's so many things that I would like to have done or think I should have done that or um, things like that, which, um, yeah, I think there's a lot of things I would have done differently. Like I like the overall result, but um, yeah, I would, I would probably have done quite a few things differently. Yeah, I, I'm saying this with many years of hindsight. Um, I'm sure if you would have asked me as I stepped down as CEO, uh, kind of position Laura is in now, I would have a lengthy rant perhaps about all the things. Um, or perhaps I would be too discreet because it was about people who were still very active. Uh, but now with the benefit of hindsight, I, I liked where, where things are. I like where things are now. I, I liked what I got from the game. Um, even the 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 not so great episodes, uh, the things we did with the uni that didn't work out, that we we ended up wasting a lot of time and energy and focus away from our main goal. Uh, but in the end, those were learning experiences as well, even though they weren't pleasant at the time. Uh, another question from Mumble. Um, how does CCP view the uni? What sort of interaction has gone on between the uni and CCP over the years? Um, when I, I think I, I think I was about six months in or so, I, I was approached by CCP uh, asking if, if they could help or what would help me kind of thing, those kind of questions. Um, but at the time, we weren't quite ready yet for that question if that, if that makes sense uh, because isquise we didn't need that much I, I had enough to to keep the uni running uh, one thing was more of a game mechanic is that we had no place to promote the uni and that that's always been an issue because obviously new players don't always go into the depth of the the forums and the sub forums to to find this little message hey join Eve university we're great for new players um so try to bring that to the front but obviously ccp has to, to balance the game between corporations as well they can't put eve university on the front page and everyone else on the on the, the 500 second so that that i i that's a balancing act for them as well uh but they've always 
I mean, the interactions I've had with CCP have always been very respectful, friendly, grateful, even. Um, and and we did discuss in, at the start some kind of partnership, but uh, at some point it was like, uh, okay, we'll, we'll talk more about this from their end. And then I never heard from again. Um, and now I recently saw that Eve University is an official partner or something, but perhaps Laura can talk a bit about that. Yeah, that's right. He, um, we've recently um, become part of the Eve, uh, the Eve Partnership Program, which basically is um, a program that... Um, aims to put um, EVE content creators uh, in touch with CCP and in touch with each other um, and sort of support them basically and we are a partner of CCP in like basically on the basis of the wiki that we have um, which is um, still really the, the premier source of um, information about EVE so um yeah that's how we're involved in the partnership program and through that we have um a discord channel in which we're in direct content with contact with ccp and with loads of other content creators as well like um like ashley trainer who's come and done some um some classes for us and various like loads of other people that run um blogs and reddits and um uh, Twitch channels and all of that kind of fun stuff. So that is a good initiative from CCP and I hope that it continues because I think it's great to kind of um, have a direct line to these kind of people that are talking about the game and um, providing content and help for players. Um, question in uh, in Mumble, excluding Jilo, who do you think has been the best uni CEO and why is your answer Laura? Um, <laughs> because I'm a nice person and she's here and the others I don't think are. So um, that's why I say Laura. And also because I think she's done extremely well. I don't want to take anything away from the others because they've put in a lot of work and try to steer the uni in their vision. Uh, but as I said before, the I, I really like where the uni is now. I, I like uh, Laura's attitude. I, I like how open she is, how the atmosphere that that's just around the uni and all the things and the policies and, and the mechanics and, and the, the activities that are going on. So, without taking anything away from the others, I think Lauren Laura has done an amazing job. Uh, more questions in Mumble. Um, question to both. Is there a particular battle that really sticks out in your mind that shaped your own gameplay or shaped the uni in a particular way? Um, shall I start, Laura? Yeah, sure. Uh, I think the first one was our first war deck. I mean, I started a corporation for the first time. I didn't know what that entailed and turned out that people could declare war on you and kill you in high sec. Um, so that was new. Um, that also uh, taught us about PvP. And again, I didn't think anything of it. I, I didn't think it was a negative. I thought saw it was a learning experience. Not saying I liked it at first because I had no clue what I was doing and nor did the others. So we got killed quite a bit. But in the end, we learned how to fight back and... We killed their CEO's battleship, which was a expensive thing at the time. So, and then they dropped the war deck, and it's like, hey, it kind of felt like we won, and I'm sure they felt they 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 got something out as well. So, um, in the end, it was all better. Um, then we had a, a very long, drawn out war against a corporation. I think it was Huff Technologies they called themselves. Um, that was a bit of a a thing because it just kept dragging on and on and on at least at the time it seemed obviously hindsight probably wasn't as long as it felt at the time playing every day 
the entire day. Um, and and the, the, the problem with that war was that it was taken to the forums and a lot of people were shitting on that corporation because they were attacking us. And basically every time those guys logged on, they had a hundred chat windows opening, people swearing at them. Um, which kind of meant that most of them didn't log on most of the time. So we were just trying to sit in space, running around, trying to find them but that didn't happen so we kind of learned that if, if you cannot destroy someone you shouldn't put so much pressure on them so i think sun tzu said something like that obviously not in those words and i don't speak chinese but if you can't destroy your opponent you should give them a way to to leave the battlefield and still save face so we kind of let off the pressure let those forum posts die down and then they could kind of gracefully, gracefully sneak out of that war declaration. Um, and then there was the big battle we had with uh, the Big Blue, um, which we were in a space claiming uh, alliance at the time. We, we only claimed uh, one constellation, I think, there's three or four systems. Um, and, and we tried to have like a neutral place in, in Nullsec where people could come and mine. Well, it was a, in the end, it was a big disaster. But uh, our, our our friends from Naga, who kind of had the industrial side of the alliance, they were building capital ships. They weren't exactly telling us about it, but they were building super caps, which were still super rare at that time. Um, and they were building those super caps in those uh, systems. Uh, didn't tell us about it, uh, but obviously some people found out. It just ran the scanner, I guess. And then the Mercenary Corp uh, Coalition showed up, obviously hired by Bob. I'm sure Sabre Ray could tell you all about it because he's been uh, been there, done that since then. Uh, so he knows the inside scoop on that. But um, yeah, they, they attacked us and, and we put up, uh, I think, a decent fight for, for who we were. Uh, but obviously they were much better equipped, better trained, uh, more experienced at that kind of uh, warfare. So uh, we had a go in that battle. It, it was fun. It was exciting, I think. Um, we saved our face, but we definitely lost the battle. Um, Laura, up to you now with your battle stories. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, there's been a lot of... Um battles that kind of stick in my mind i um am not too pvp focused or well at the moment i am but i haven't been historically so um a lot of them i've sort of watched from the sidelines but um i remember as a very new player going to the um defense of the posts in aldrat um against rvb that was um an interesting one <laughs> um and there have been various things of during my tenure of um eviction attempts question mark against um the Wombo campus the Nullset campus um various campuses of face threats and um had to defend themselves to sort of um varying degrees of success um i really love um what's happened recently with the establishment of the sc team and the kind of um handing them the responsibility for strategic ops i think there have been so many um really awesome um sort of uh fights since then um for sort of strategic objectives which i'm really enjoying um and some of them are kind of boring like um sticking the uh, hyper kittens on but it's things that you have to do <laughs> um, and i love that the uni is defending itself i think that is brilliant um, so I, I do like the current, um, raft of, um, strategic operations that we have and that we have an awesome team that is, um, doing a magnificent job in getting those together and making them all run smoothly. Okay. Uh, another, uh, mumble question. Uh, Morning Maniac said earlier that the uni used to hold a uh, territory in, uh, Nullsec. Uh, since we don't have any now, do you think the uni is missing core gameplay here, or is it better that we avoid that section of space? I give that one to Laura. <laughs> um, I mean, 
I took the view during my time as CEO that um, we didn't want to hold off. Um, I mean, mostly because it's a great big hassle um, and it's probably not worth it for the learning objectives that we get, um, considering we have a presence in MPC null space. Um, also kind of a little bit of neutrality as well, because if you're taking solve, you're taking it off someone and you have to deal with neighbours and it's basically brings um, the effort of keeping us neutral um, up a huge amount. Um, but to be, for me personally, mostly just the effort involved um, in keep, taking, keeping, defending, solve, um, I didn't think was worth it. Um, but I hasten to add that I'm not CEO anymore. And if Gio wants to take the uni in that direction, he is very welcome to. But that's just the decision that I made while I was CEO. Yeah, so, so in my time we tried it and in the end we found that it distracted so much from our main goals because it basically meant that all the experienced, more senior members were busy defending it, policing it or, or mining it, trying to make some ISK for themselves or rat hunting or doing whatever, um, that it really distracted from our mission which was helping new players uh, get a good start. Um, because most of those new players weren't quite ready for it. I mean, they'd see a, a 500k belt rat and they get just get killed in seconds. So in the end, uh, yeah, we got kicked out, but uh, we definitely made the decision not to go back because it, it, was, it was just too much of a hassle, like Laura said. There's another question, Mumble, which is, are there any failed enterprises or campuses EUNI has had in the past that might be worth revisiting now or in the future? Um, that's kind of a difficult one, to be honest. Um, I think there have been things that um, during my time as CEO we've tried that didn't work out that um, might be good to try again, but a lot of time there's... Um, there's a reason that it failed um, and we've probably learned things from the fact that it failed um, that maybe have allowed us to make different decisions and do something more successful the next time around. So, I mean, for me personally, there's nothing that's immediately springing to mind of, yeah, we, you know, we should totally do that again because I think the stuff that has failed, we've, has failed for a reason and we've learned from that. But what are your thoughts on that morning? I agree. I mean, every failure is a learning experience and uh, makes you move forward. But then again, the uni changes, the leadership changes and the game changes. So perhaps um, some things will be attempted again and they'll be more successful. But uh, yeah, it is what it is. And if, if it's something failed, it failed for a reason. So uh, moving forward. We've got more questions coming in, um, which is great, and we will answer them. But um, I'm just kind of conscious that we have been going for an hour and a half. So I would probably encourage you people, if you still have questions you want to ask, to sort of start writing them up now, and we'll try and answer um, the questions that remain. But we don't want to keep you guys here all night. <laughs> um, and the question that Felix has asked in Rumble is either of both Laura and Morning, what starting tips would you give to people interested in getting involved in the staffing side of Eve Uni, particularly the implementation of working relationships and effective skills in assisting the onboarding of new members to the uni? Just say you want to do it and you'll you got the job, I think. <laughs> Yeah, for sure. We've um, we've got a personnel department whose job it is to um, bring people into the uni. So they review applications and carry out interviews. They're personnel officers. And then we have another group of people who are called orientation officers now. And their job is to keep in touch with people when they're very new to the uni. So when they're like up to a month in the uni and basically... Um, like signpost them things because there's a whole lot of information when you join EV Uni and it can be really overwhelming. So their job is to kind of like drip relevant information when it's needed and to answer immediate questions like 
how do I apply for SRP, for example, or um, how do I get a freshman title? Like their job is to basically um, look after people when they're very, very new, um, not on a one-to-one -one basis, but on like um, uh, everyone that's joined the uni basis. So if you're interested in either of those um, roles, then there is a um, there's a forum post in the university discussion forum which has all of the open staff roles available and you can pop in an application through the link that's in there so yeah i definitely encourage you if you want to help out new players to um have a look at those have a look at that post and apply for any roles that you're interested in uh, next question from mumble um laura shall we say this is the final question yeah, can do. Uh, question to both. Learn, lead and leave has been the motto for a while. How to reconcile that efficient, efficiently with high player uh, skill point retention and passing knowledge? That is always the problem we have. <laughs> Yeah, it is a balancing act because uh, obviously once you've got uh, a certain level of experience, uh, you, you want to move on. Uh, but then again, we also need those experienced players to teach uh, new players. So what happens, some, I mean, some people stick around because they like the atmosphere and they, they like to, to hang out with uh, new people and, and they just enjoy teaching. Um, I don't know if this is still a thing, but... Uh, Teachers sometimes leave their alts in the uni to teach, and then their, their main character goes into null seco or whatever they want to do. Um, so, so they can do both at the same time. Yeah, I just um, I'd agree with that, and that's something that. Um I think hopefully we're seeing um, increasing amounts now, people deciding that they want to move on from the uni with their main character, but they decide to stick an alt in to um, continue to help out new players and maybe teach the old class and stuff like that, which is brilliant. I think that's um, a good way of reconciling those two um, positions, but it's, it's always going to be a struggle because people join the uni, learn stuff, and then move on to somewhere else, which... Um, yeah, it's going to mean a vacuum of experiences, but um, we're trying our best to fill that with um, players that decide to stick around and bring in like guest lecturers and stuff to talk about areas of the game that they know a lot about, like um, Ashley, who's come in and talked to us about fittings, for example. Right, final two questions on Mumble. Uh, my answer for both is yes. Um, so that's it for me. <laughs> The benefit of Twitch viewers, the um, the questions were, did you enjoy the chat? Yes. And um, have you ever been congratulated for your work um, in the uni outside, um, like the way that Scott, Scott Manley congratulated Laura? I just want to add that John is also a massive troll. <laughs> um, love you, John. <laughs> well, like I mentioned before, I, I have the trophy on my desk to prove that. So... But anyway, uh, to finish it up for me, I, I really enjoy um, going back uh, mem to memory lane uh, with all of you. Um, th thank you for your time. It's been uh, most interesting. And uh, hopefully see you later at some point, either on or offline. And stay healthy and uh, stay happy. Yeah, thank you very much for your time and coming to talk to us. I'm sure that... Um... Everyone enjoyed it as much as I did. Um, and thank you everyone for coming on to listen. It's um, amazing to see so many people here, to be honest. So, um, yeah, thanks very much for taking the time.